Insulating your home, definitely a winner in terms of saving energy and therefore money, involves making decisions. Where to insulate, what products to use and how to do it are just some of the questions you need to answer. Energy Quarter visits a 1960s semi-detached dwelling in North County Dublin being externally insulated by Cozy Homes. The house that we're going to look at today is typical to this area. It comprises of hollow block construction with a half brick front and a new extension to the rear. Now before any works are carried out on site it's very important that we carry out a full site survey. We need to do this for two reasons. Firstly to identify any particular issues on the site and secondly to make sure there are no planning or grant problems for the client in the future. Some of the items we have identified on this house are the presence of overhead ESB cables and a live gas box. These two particular items can only be dealt with by the utility companies and it is important that they are informed before works are carried out on site. Some other areas that need to be assessed would be the depth of the soffit, the current ventilation in the house and the presence of any other fittings such as pipework, light fittings, alarm boxes or anything of this nature. All these items need to be treated or removed before starting the installation. The second part of the inspection would assess the building fabric and come up with the best solution for the client. This would generally take into account the existing wall buildup, which is assessed by carrying out an inspection to the walls with a bore scope. In this case we are using 120 mm of aged high density EPS to the original house and the boroscopic inspection has allowed us to verify that the recent extension is up to current regulations. On this house we are pumping the brick to the front of the house as this brick is present on all properties in the area. We have also chosen a dash finish as this was the finish prior to the works being carried out. Lastly, we make sure that the whole house solution, as required under the SEAI grant scheme, is achieved. Once all these areas have been identified, it is time to start the installation itself. Generally, this will take between 7 to 10 working days. The first items that need to be addressed is the protection of the property. The windows, doors, drains and any paths or grassed areas need to be protected so as we can give them back to the client as we find them. With this two-storey house, the next step is to put up the scaffolding, which by law must be installed by a qualified and insured contractor. Once this is complete, it allows us to get on with the removal of reveals and heads. It is important that we try to get insulation on these to ensure damp or mould growth doesn't start to occur internally. Firstly, the base track will be installed, generally at DPC level. This along with the plinth detail is imperative to all systems and basic good practice to make sure the system does not fail. The insulation itself is then installed. This is both adhesively and mechanically fixed. Only fixings certified with the system can be used and if cheaper versions are used this can lead to the fixings being visible during cold weather especially with thinner finishes. We use a two part fully plastic fixing which as non-metallic eliminates the possibility of this occurring. Staggering the boards is important to make sure there are no weaknesses. Particular attention needs to be paid to the detailing around windows. If this L detail is not followed, cracking is almost certain to occur. Lastly, it is vitally important that fire breaks are installed between properties. It is also important that boiler flues and chimneys are fireproofed. Quality control and inspection of the work is the task of Paul McLaughlin from Parix Lanco. The installation process is the most important aspect to a successful retrofit, as any mistakes made in the preparation and installation can have a long-term effect on the success of the project. This can cost a homeowner a lot of money in years to come if not done properly. All external insulation systems are proven to work, but they rely heavily on the highly skilled plastering tradesman to ensure all works are carried out to the manufacturer's site specific specification. Once all the insulation has been correctly fixed to the house and inspected, it's time to get on with the plastering. The application of base coat and mesh is the same for all systems and is this that gives the system its initial strength and waterproofing. It is important that the correct procedure is followed when applying the base coat and mesh. Firstly the wall is coated with a layer of base coat. When this is complete, but before it has dried, the mesh must be applied. The mesh comes in one meter wide rolls, 
and must be overlapped at the edges to give extra strength. Any stress points, such as around windows, require additional mesh. When the mesh is fully installed, we can then apply the second pass of the base coat. In total, this should be no less than 5mm. At this point, how the base coat is left is dependent on the finish picked. If an acrylic finish is being used, the base coat must be troweled completely smooth, as only 2 to 3 millimeters will be going on top. In this case, we will be applying a mineral dash finish to twice this depth, and so the base coat need not be as smooth. The last part of any system is the final coat. NSAI have strict restrictions on what finishes can be applied at what temperatures. The breathable mineral finish we are using today, however, has been designed for use in damper, colder European climates. Once the finished coat has been applied, it is dashed in the traditional manner. This natural stone dash finish offers the client excellent impact resistance. Once the scaffolding is removed and the final cleanup complete, the new house is handed back to the client. On the successful completion of the external insulation system, Parex Lanco are now in a position to offer a homeowner's manual and a 10-year warranty to conform to SEAI's standard regulation.